It's a quiet, beautiful document in history that may have been lost in the chaos of World War II, but survived, miraculously, to help us realize that what we go through, the problems we face today, here and now, not just politically, but spiritually, socially, existentially, are pretty much the same. Better than food, man. Bonjour à tous, welcome to Better Than Food. I'm your host, Clifford Lee Sargent. Great to see you as always. How's it going? How y'all been? It's been a little while. Uh, I got snowed in over here. It's kind of crazy, but you know, whatever. We made it, we're alive. Talked to one of my best friends in Texas the other day, near the south of Austin, and uh, it's just blanketed in snow. It's crazy. This is this has not happened since the year I was born, so that's 31 years ago. So it's definitely not global warming, I'm sure. Today we're going to talk about a great book. So get that coffee. Today's episode is brought to you by the Ridge Wallet, specifically this limited edition topographic model. It even has the latitude and longitude right there. I wonder what that is. I wonder if that's like an actual ridge that uh, inspired the company or something. That's curious. I'm interested. Look at that thing. How is that not rad? It's got a real outdoorsy vibe, you know? I feel it'll be very handy when you're scaling the side of that mountain in Colorado or whatever. Rugged and yet classy. I love it. These things are awesome. They are light, sleek, industrial. They are easy to carry around. They fit into your front pocket, not your back pocket, so your spine doesn't get all warped. Holds up to 12 cards plus room for cash on the back. It also comes with the money clip, which you can attach if you prefer that. But I don't know, there's just something about them. There's something very convenient and smart about, uh, about carrying this, I feel. It's like why we move from flip phones to smartphones, but we still carry the same wallet. It also has RFID blocking technology that protects you from digital pickpockets, which is important, very important. Technology is moving so fast and we, it, you know, so are scammers. I mean, there is such a thing as a smart thief. So, you know, any protection is good is all I'm saying. The durable material means that each wallet comes with a lifetime warranty. You can carry this one wallet around for life. In fact, the Rich team is so confident you'll like it, you can test drive it for 45 days. You can send it back for a full refund if you don't love it. And if this does not please you, there are over 30 colors and styles, including carbon fiber and burnt titanium. Get 10% off your whole order today with free worldwide shipping returns by going to rich.com forward slash better than food and using the discount code better than food. The link is below. Thank you so much. I gotta say also, just as far as like sponsors, just like working with people in general, and this is like, you know, pause a sponsorship for a second. This is just me being real and like me talking for a sec. I mean, you can argue that it's like part of the sponsorship, like, cause it's gonna benefit them of course, but whatever. Anyways, but, but really pausing it and just me being frank, uh, they've been a great company to work with. They have been so hands-off, so uh, generous, and they have been very, very pleasant to work with. It has actually been like a pleasure, so. Thank you, Ridge. I really appreciate it. Just being a cool person goes so far. So today is Jean Giano's um, Occupation Journal. This is just a gorgeous looking book, translated by Jody Gladding from Archipelago Books. This was sent to me. I'm sponsored by them partially. Uh, it was sent to me by Archipelago Books. Thank you very much to them, and I really appreciate it. They are a wonderful publishing company, and they've been very patient while I've uh, taken my time with this one. This was actually published last year. They've sent me some others as well that look just stunning, including the latest collection of essays from uh, uh, Karl Ove Knausgaard called In the Land of the Cyclops. I can't wait to get to it. It looks awesome. Occupation Journal is the year-long journal of Jean Giano from the, from the month of September 1943 to September 1944, during the German occupation of France. This was originally published in French in 1995. It's interesting having this review coming directly off of uh, uh, Pinchon's uh, Gravity's Rainbow, which is dealing with almost the same era in World War II, maybe a little later. But this journal, you know, is far, far, far more subdued. Instead of an absurdist macro portrait where you can see everything, everything you never wanted to see in Gravity's Rainbow, in this, we're zooming very, very, very far into the life of one man in a small town in France. And this man happens to be a very well-known author uh, at the time. So that's, that's where we start. Uh, the journal goes up until uh, two days before he was arrested for allegedly collaborating with the Nazis. He was freed without any charges actually being made five months later. Terrifying. Especially after reading this book, you can see, it seems, you know, of course, I'm no expert. It seems how wrong they were, if all of this is true. So this was actually a pleasant little read. 
while the city of Portland, Oregon was blanketed under a layer of ice and snow. And surprisingly out there, you know, the mood has improved significantly and everyone has been much, much more friendly. Something about all the bright light out there and the, the knowledge of a mutual struggle for everyone and the recognition that, you know, we're all, <laughs> when we see each other on the street, we're all out there doing our best not to fall on our ass. It's refreshing, I don't know. Unfortunately, now those good vibes have just turned to dirty slush. But we were cooped up indoors in here, watching the blue winter outside and cooking stew and drinking wine. Lots of wine. Anyways, back to the book. The journal starts off as a document depicting, you know, the environment Giono is living at the time, the small French town of Manosque. By this time, like I said, Jean Giono is a well-known writer to the point where a German soldier with a machine gun and another actually come into his house asking for an autograph. In his own words, the journal is not so much a documentation as it is a self-portrait of the French author Jean Giono. An interesting, mysterious author whose book A King Alone I reviewed a couple years back is a strange, eerie, discordant serial killer mystery with an incredibly unique vibe. One that I ought to return to someday. Kind of a, kind of a totally individual, unique mystery. Reading actually Occupation Journal first and then reading A King Alone would be the correct order because you can see, because A King Alone was published I think in 1947 and so this ends in 1944 and you know then he's in prison and so like after he gets out we can, you know, he, he begins writing again. And I think later in life he became rather like kind of disillusioned or jaded with, um, with human beings in general, which I mean for good reason, seeing what he's seen. Uh, and part of that you can, you can see in this book. So you can totally see where the, I want to say disappoint, yeah, kind of grand disappointment comes from in A King Alone. Yeah, maybe disappointment is the right word. This kind of, this kind of awe-filled disappointment. I'm just thinking of the end with the, the blood uh, and the snow. And uh, oh, it's just terrific, actually. Really, really dark. But I mean, this is coming off of the one, I mean, what, the darkest time in recorded history, or one of them, certainly. Um, so, interestingly, that one was published in 1947, not long after this journal. And some of the darker moments in this book, people in town being murdered, friends or acquaintances of Giono, the German soldiers, the roaming French gangs of men stealing and shooting people, grisly details such as the eyes of a corpse that's been left out all day being uh, uh, eaten by bees. This kind of all-encompassing darkness that descends on a small town in France permeates a king alone. So here we find Giono in this town of Manosque where he was born and eventually died, traveling back and forth to Marseille by train to see a movie from time to time, at least before the city is bombed and all communication is lost which is a very dark moment. Meanwhile, he's taking care of his family, his wife. He's letting people stay with him who are in trouble. I believe he's helping some of his Jewish friends or acquaintances hide. He's being accused by the media of certain things at the same time, such as collaborating with the Germans, I think, or being a, a Nazi sympathizer or something like that. And on top of that, he's worrying about debts, money, his friends, particularly the poet uh, Lucien Jacques, who I've never read before, his manuscripts, which he has to sell off, his dying relatives, uh, all the while trying to write, trying to create art. And not only to write, but you know, to write consistently and better, to work. And simultaneously and very admirably, uh, amidst all of this, passionately maintaining his position of pacifism, which I admire. I admire that very much. He's stuck between communists, fascists, gangs, and bombings, and gossip about him, since he's a well-known writer. And everyone is out for blood, it seems. And you know, that's why you don't want to get too famous today, because it's the exact same thing. In addition, you know, meanwhile, his aging mother is sick, his children are growing up, and a whole host of other, you know, kind of day-to-day -day conflicts that any of us could relate to in our lives. Except his are kind of magnified by the circumstances, right? That is, World War II, and the invasion of Germany into France, as well as, you know, near the end, the arrival of the Americans. His description of the American food that's brought is really interesting too, it's very telling. I think he says it's, it tastes like stuff that was created in a laboratory. And it's kind of hysterical and funny, but it's also like deeply disturbing because it's true. I mean, like, and you know, I've decided that basically American children, myself included, uh, are, are lab rats, you know, are and were lab rats. If you balk at that statement, I suggest you read the nutritional content of whatever you're eating next time here in America. <laughs> So yeah, I enjoyed it. I thought it was the right time to read this book, no doubt. Being stuck here, as in this apartment, is absolutely no comparison. But more than any other time in my life, probably, uh, I, I think I, I've been able to relate to Giono's work here more. It's sort of wild that Archipelago published this in March 2020. It was the, you know, perfect time for it. The isolation, the uncertainty, the self-examination, the desire to accomplish your goals, to write, to be better and consistent, the money worries, the reflections on relationships and art, and the increased importance of reading. All of these things are there, and they're all relatable. There's a great review of this book by uh, Sarah Moore, which said something similar, so I'll link to that below as well. 
What does he say on page 259? He says, Reading is truly the central pleasure of uncertain times, hence the success of the literary artists in the Middle Ages. Never has Proust been so vivid, so poetic, from so powerful a magic source as with this reading that I'm doing now, tortured by the noise of passing armies and mass delirium. As though there weren't enough natural baseness, a public notice advises, demands, charges us to denounce, even anonymously, those in the Ancien Regime. That's going to be a beautiful sight. And the self-criticism, maybe, maybe that's what I found the most interesting. The writer or artist at work, you know, for me, is very relatable. Not that I'll be able to write anything on his level, but you know, it's... It's the process, right? It's a very familiar process for anybody who's, who's tried to write, uh, and tried to write consistently, and, and tried to write well. That's, that's the, that's the tough one. <laughs> In my experience, I, I, I'm not there yet. After nearly 20 years of work, I've still not managed to write a true book. I haven't worked hard enough. These calisthenics may build my muscles. To date, everything I've done lacks depths. I will only be able to lie well, truly invent, in parentheses, when I learn to be very true. Submit to the object. Find the style. An analytical art. I think for me, the enormous spider web of influence is sort of what's amazing about the book. By that, I mean you have the center, who knows, of like some ancient Greek text, for example. Then that influences Stendhal, and then Stendhal influences Giono, and then Giono influences us, and then who knows in the future, right? And you have this large web sort of forming from which you can kind of trace back the influential origins of art. I always like to see what people look like uh, as soon as I hear about them, as soon as I hear about their, their work. That's apparently not the case with everybody. Like, my, like you know, not everybody likes to, to put faces to the names and all of that. I like to know like everything. I'm, I'm very much a, you know, historical voyeur. Maybe I'll write a book called The Spider Web of Literature and I'll just take all the books that I think are better than food and I'll place them in this diagram and show how they relate and have influenced one another. I don't know, maybe, maybe, that might be cool. So what did I dislike? With any kind of French intellectual figure that I've read, you know, from, I mean, Breton to Bataille, if you're reading their personal works or diaries in the middle of the 20th century, and this probably goes for anybody at any time ever, I'm just greeted with names and places which I've never heard, I have no knowledge of. So, so within those, those references, you, you need to get the references to get the full thing, right? So frequently it's just a little inside, you know, and you, and you just have to kind of go and do that research. With, with this one, not so much, not, not as much as others. Uh, I think Nadja by Breton is probably like the most um, just referential, French referential novel. I didn't get a lot of the references as far as like the names of people mentioned. So, so um, I think to get the full scope of this book, you would have to go and do that research. Um, I think that's kind of frequent for, you know, journals or, or diaries and stuff though. For the most part, it was totally fine, you know, because you and I, you know, we have like an idea of Stendhal, Balzac, Gide, and Proust, even if we haven't read them. Two out of four in my case, so that's not too bad. But it's still very interesting to read someone else's thoughts on their work, especially another well-known author. But depending on the way it's discussed, sometimes it can get dry. Reading about all these names that have great significance for the author of the journal, but not for us, ideally, yet. But it is interesting to think about, you know, what does it mean when a man's journal from 1944 is so relatable to so many of us all around the world, no matter what country you're in or where you come from uh, in this era that we're living in? Uh, because because you, you can get plenty, even if you don't get the references, you can get plenty out of this book. But yeah, what that means, I'm not sure. I'll be thinking about it. Uh, it's definitely got, it's, it's raised some interesting questions for me, that's for sure. So is it better than food? No, not for me. Though it may be for you if you're a huge fan of Gian Giano. Um, it's just, you know, I didn't love it, you know, it's not an epic life changer. But I would say, uh, if it sounds interesting to you at all, it's certainly worth your time. It's a quiet, beautiful document in history that may have been lost in the chaos of World War II, but survived, miraculously, to help us realize that what we go through, the problems we face today, here and now, not just politically, but spiritually, socially, existentially, are pretty much the same. Which is both ridiculously frustrating and reassuring. So, yeah, interesting. I really want to visit Minosk. Any viewers out there from Minosk? Yeah, Occupation Journal, Jean Giano, cool. Coffee time. For those of you who are new, I take all of the patrons on Patreon who have donated $5 or more per video to the show. I place their names in this mason jar. I pull out a name for every review I do and I send whoever's name I pull out a hard copy of the book I'm reviewing plus a bag of coffee roasted by yours truly. Yes, I am back to roasting and I have a phenomenal Ethiopian that I just got. Delicious.
Amazing. If you would like to help support the show, you can click on the link below or go to patreon.com forward slash books are better than food and donate $5 or more per video. I sincerely appreciate it. $1 or more will get you access to the patron only reviews ad free as well. The regular reviews ad free plus the discord channel and the better than Friday newsletter I send out every Friday, which is just a list of stuff I'm interested in at any given time, five things. So uh, unfortunately, international shipping is not included. Sorry about that. That Discord channel is also really awesome. I just kind of like want to hype that up because it's really funny. You know, tons of memes and jokes and people recommending stuff back and forth. Tons of great people in there. It's pretty fire. So, all right. Thank you very much to all the patrons and best of luck. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Eric. Eric B. Thank you very much, Eric B. I really appreciate it. You're going to receive Occupation Journal by Jean Giano plus some delicious coffee. And there you go. Cool. All right, that's all I've got for you today. Thank you very much for watching. Please always remember to bring a book wherever you go, even in the snow. Never know when you'll have five or 10 minutes. Pretty soon you're finishing more books and telling people about them, people like me. And then I'll talk about them on here. And I'll say thank you very much to so-and-so. Thank you very much to Sarah over at Archipelago Books. Really appreciate it. Cheers. Take care of yourselves. Have a great night. Talk to you soon. Ciao.